ERC6551 allows me to generate a token bound account to an NFT ID, which means that now I can deposit ERC20 tokens onto an NFT. Let's deploy the ERC6551 smart contracts and build an app that users can log in and generate NFT wallets and also send and receive ERC20 tokens straight into their NFTs. When the user selects each NFT, we will display its associated ERC6551 token bound account. The NFT holder can proceed to transfer ERC20 tokens directly to the NFT wallet address, aka the token bound account. And finally, the holder will be able to withdraw the tokens from the NFT wallet to their own wallet. Let's talk about the ERC-6551 and what it does. It's allowing an ERC-721 NFT token to have a token bound account, an address that I can effectively use to send and receive ERC-20 tokens. That's all we're doing. One hash, one address value that will be bound, will be attached to an NFT. I can drop ERC-20 tokens onto that NFT. I can send that NFT to someone else and I'm effectively not only sending the NFT, but I am sending a token bound account with ERC20 tokens on it as well, which means that now the NFT itself can hold ERC20 tokens. Two things. How are we able to generate a token account per NFT ID? We grab the token smart contract, and this is the NFT collection smart contract, the existing one, and we generate the token bound account by grabbing the address of the smart contract, the token ID, the network or the mainnet that that NFT smart contract was deployed, the chain ID and other attributes that are optional, but are there to generate an unique ID AKA wallet address that is bound or it's attached to that NFT ID. That is literally how we do it. We need two things. So there's two main contracts, the ERC6551 registry smart contract and the account smart contract. Let's talk about those two. The name basically says that all. Registry is going to register new token bound accounts. The NFT address that was generated and allowed the NFT to hold ERC20 tokens, okay? So we are going to use that ERC6551 registry smart contract to generate those addresses and register them on the blockchain. And we have the account smart contract. This is the quote, the wallet account. So this is how the that token bound account is going to operate. I can add functions onto that account smart contract to send ERC20 tokens, to receive ERC20 tokens, to do some other mechanisms into the smart contract. And in this tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be modifying that account smart contract, the base smart contract straight out of the EIP. We are going to be modifying the smart contract to also receive and send custom ERC20 tokens. If we implement the ERC6551 account smart contract just as it is, just like the EIP proposal, we are going to be able to receive and send native tokens. So if we deploy this on the Ethereum blockchain, we are going to be able to send and receive ETH tokens on the token bound account, on the NFT wallet. Cool. Let's call it the NFT wallet, okay? So I'm gonna be able to receive ETH tokens onto that account if I deployed this 6551 stack on the Ethereum mainnet. If I deploy this on the Polygon mainnet, I will be able to receive and send Matic. But let's give it a twist. Let's make it more functional if you have a custom ERC20 token that you want to airdrop to the NFT wallet, we are going to be able to do that because we're going to be modifying the account smart contract to allow it to receive custom ERC20 tokens. So now not only the native token, but we are also going to be able to send and receive custom ERC20 tokens inside that wallet, which is amazing. And I think this is something we must do as well. Okay. And not only that, we are definitely building the web front end because here's the thing. If I have a group of NFT holders from my collection and I want them to have their own NFT token bound account or AKA an NFT wallet for each NFT ID that they hold, 
we need to give them the mechanism so they can interact with the ERC6551 token bound smart contract, right? So the end user is going to log in into this web front end and it's going to see the NFTs that they're holding in the connected wallet because they're going to be able to connect their wallet. The app is going to scan the wallet to see which NFTs from the collection are in the wallet. We're going to be able to display that on the front end and then we're going to give the opportunity to the user to generate those token bound accounts. Account. And by the way, they only need to generate this one time. Once they generate the token bound account, then the front end should be able to refresh and allow the user to receive or withdraw those tokens. So what we're going to do, we are going to grab the address that was generated and we are going to be sending test tokens. We are going to be sending test native tokens. Let's work with an Ethereum testnet like Sepolia and we are just going to drop native tokens so you can see that the front end is going to be able to display how many ERC20 tokens it's the NFT holding. And we are going to also give the opportunity to the holder of that NFT to withdraw any of the ERC20 tokens that the user has received onto that NFT. The moment they hit the withdraw button, they are effectively telling the token bound account, withdraw those tokens, because we are going to be building that function on the ERC6551 account smart contract. From the user perspective, they don't have to know anything. All they have to do is click the token, click withdraw, and on the back, we are going to be connecting everything to make this happen. In a nutshell, we are going to be deploying two smart contracts, the ERC6551 registry smart contract, and we are going to be deploying the ERC6551 account smart contract. We are going to be modifying the ERC6551 account smart contract. And finally, we will build the front end and connect everything and have a fully functional ERC6551 NFT wallet app. It's gonna be an amazing, amazing tutorial. And we are building everything the contracts and the front end and we will take a look and see how this magic all works. Alrighty, let's go ahead and let's make this happen.